Life isn't easy here in the mountains of central Vietnam. The climate is difficult. Drought followed by heavy rains. The soil is infertile and clean water is scarce. Farming is often from hand to mouth. The people here are poor. Many belong to the minority Sedang ethnic group. But help is coming to the village of Tu Cup. It's part of a project that promises to improve the lives of people here. The Central Region Poetry Reduction Project work in four provinces. One of those is Kontum. We are using a participatory approach to help local people make their own plans for their village and common. We have begun the training staff how to do participatory rural appraisal and how to make development plans in a bottom-up way. This trainer will go on to train others. After this course, we will use this method to make plans in other communes where people need help to get our party. Today, the project team is going to meet the villagers of Tu Cup. They're going to do a participatory rural appraisal in Tu Cup to find out about the village. They will help the villagers identify the problems they face. Then, they will help the villagers work out how to solve the problems. A participatory rural appraisal begins with a meeting with all the villagers. They may be curious. They may be suspicious. They may have high expectations. The meeting gives them an idea of what it's all about. The project team is there to help and guide. The team has three or four members. It's their job to guide the process. The team should have both men and women, with a mix of backgrounds, agriculture, health, engineering and so on. The team explains what a participatory rural appraisal is and what the people can expect. They ask the people to help. It's important that village leaders understand and support the process. It's also important that all types of people are involved, young and old, rich and poor, men and women. <laughs> Participatory rural uprise or PRA for short, it's a way to help things local people uprise their situation. It helps describe their situation, the area where they live, the crop they grow, the animal they raise, how they earn their living. The team has never been to Tu Cup before. So some villagers take them on a walk around the village. That helps the team understand the general situation. It also gives everyone an idea of where to start. Rung, rung tái sinh, rồi, đó, khu này, 
A participatory rural appraisal consists of a series of exercises, each focusing on a certain topic. There are maps, diagrams, lists and tables. The people themselves do the drawing and writing. There are three main types of exercises. The first type covers natural and physical resources, the land, infrastructure, crops and animals that people depend on. The second type looks at social and economic topics, income, labour and so on. The third type looks at trends and institutions, the organisations in the village and changes over time. One group focuses on natural and physical resources. They go on a walk through the village. The team can get more familiar with the village and its surroundings. They can ask questions, identify problems, look for opportunities. Back in the village, people draw a map of the village. They can draw the map on a big piece of paper, or they can draw it on the floor with chalk. But here they're using sticks and leaves to draw the map on a smooth piece of ground. They mark the hills, the roads, the rivers and canals. They can use sticks, leaves or bits of wood to show things like forest, crops and houses. When it's ready, the map can be copied onto a piece of paper to preserve it. Other things can be marked on the map too. Things like land ownership, the route of a new irrigation canal, or soil that needs fertilizer. A transect is a line from one end of the village to the other. It goes through all the different land types in the village. It shows the land use, the soil type, the difficulties in each type of land and the opportunities. During their walk through the village, the people note the situation in each place. They look at the crops. What crops are grown? What are the problems with each one? Pests, diseases, the soil, irrigation and so on. They do the same for fruit trees. And for livestock. And they look at the forests.
In the evening, the villagers write all this information on a transect diagram. For each land type, there's information on the land use, the soil type, problems and possible solutions. Another group of villagers draws up a seasonal calendar. The months are across the top, one for January, two for February and so on. The leaves show when, when the heaviest rains are and when the dry season is. The calendar can also show what crops are planted and when they're harvested. It also shows when there are problems such as food shortages and when people have to find money for weddings and other celebrations. The calendar helps the team understand what the villagers do each month. And maybe the villagers will see ways that they can improve their farming by planting a different crop, for example. Many participatory rural appraisal exercises use a matrix or table. This matrix is about different types of trees. Along one side of the table are the crops and trees. This one is coffee. The villagers can then give each type of plant a score. They use small stones. Coffee is a good crop, it gets seven points. But this crop is not as good, it gets just four points. Matrices can be used for all kinds of things. They can show crops, livestock, health problems, education, infrastructure and so on. The second major area for a participatory appraisal is the social and economic situation. In every village, some people are poor and some are better off. But who are they? The villagers write down the names of all the families in the village, one family on each card. They then sort the cards into piles. Here, the yellow cards show the poorest families and the pink cards show those who are slightly better off. The villagers can also say how they know someone is rich or poor. A rich family may have a TV or a motorbike. A poor family lives in a house with a thatched roof and is very often short of food. The team interviews several families to find out how they make a living. They also ask about the particular problems they face. It's not necessary to interview everyone, it's enough to talk to a few people from each group. The rich, the poor, ethnic minorities, men and women. Where do the rich people and poor people live in the village? It's easy to find out. This group is putting the cards on a map.
It's important to remember about women. These villagers have a chance to say what they think about credit, off-farm work, and the types of work that women do. The third major area in a participatory appraisal looks at institutions and networks. These people are coming up with a timeline for the village. Older people remember what happened 20 or 30 years ago. When was the village founded? When was a road built? When did electricity come? What year was the big flood? And has there been a famine recently? They can also discuss trends over time. What has happened to the forest cover? How about yields of crops? How about incomes? Has life been getting better? or worse. Here's one way to look at institutions. This is called a Venn diagram. The big circle in the middle represents the villagers. The ovals of coloured paper are the various institutions they come into contact with. The commune administration, the extension service, the clinic, the school, local traders and so on. The distance away from the big circle shows how much influence the institution has on the villagers. This Venn diagram shows where people get information. The most important sources of information for these villagers are inside the big circle, the village chairman and their friends. done all the exercises, the villagers get together again to discuss what they've found. They listen to what each group has produced. They check the information. Now's the time to fill in any gaps and to correct mistakes. Everything is written down on paper, so there's a record. <laughs> But they don't stop there. They go on to plan how to solve the problems. Small groups plan what to do about each problem. This group is planning what to do in agriculture. Another group plans for forestry. And another one looks at infrastructure. They have to decide what to do about each problem. The exercises have identified certain problems. No drinking water, bad roads, lack of information, no credit and so on. The villagers will also have suggested some solutions. Digging a well, for example, or getting training on some new farming methods. Oh. 
When the plans are ready, they hold a meeting with all the families in the village. That's where the groups present their plans. There are sure to be more ideas than money to pay for them. So the villagers must decide what are the top priorities, what to do first. They must also decide who is going to do what and how to pay for it. Some things the villagers can do by themselves. Repair that path up the hillside? Yes, we can do that. For other things, they will need some outside help. And that costs money. Once they have put all of their ideas together, they can go and look for support. They can ask the local government for help. Or maybe a non-government organization can assist. Participatory rural appraisal helps people help themselves. The villagers themselves work out how to improve their lives. They look at where they are now and they can plan where they want to go. Participatory rural appraisal generates a lot of information that can be used in development work. It helps local people decide what to do. And it helps them decide how to do it. The villagers themselves make the decisions. They do the talking. The officials listen and then work out how they can respond. Participatory rural appraisal is a good way to help us to collect information and indicate what needs to be done in our plan and help us to give priority for important activities. The people of Tukap have finished their plan. They're looking forward to seeing it put into action. There's still a lot of work to do. But they've started out on the road to a better future.